That fat is called docosahexaenoic acid, or DHA, as you might know it. Or you might know it as a particular omega-3 fat. And in an extensive analysis of 48 studies, researchers seem to think that it reduces our risk of developing dementia, a series of brain-related disorders. But is that what the science herein actually shows? And is the evidence really strong enough to make that case? And if so, how much DHA is necessary to experience that benefit? So the researchers pulled 48 studies into what's called a systematic review. It's a review of the studies that follows of certain rules and guidelines for exactness and reliability. But beyond that, they also included a large chunk of these studies into a meta-analysis, which means that all the data is combined to tease out any potential relationships, like reduced risk of dementia, which they then transformed into a quantified network collation, which I just made up. It doesn't exist, but it seems to fit the nerdiness of what I just described, so here we are. Anyway, when we pool all these data together, we discover that DHA is linked to reduced dementia risk. But importantly, it wasn't just dietary intake of DHA that was looked at, but also the amount found in the blood and the amount specifically integrated into your cells. Now, that's a key distinction because consuming omega-3s at the time of the researchers measured DHA intake does not guarantee omega-3s, remember that's the uh, fat class that DHA belongs to, have been consumed for long periods of time, which is necessary for omega-3s like DHA to be integrated, actually added into the structure of our cells. I'll discuss how to apply all that to our lives later on, but for now, just know that looking at membrane DHA is a better long-term marker of DHA consumption. So I've simplified the data here. We have three different ways of assessing DHA on the left side. So the yellow line going up indicates neutral or no link between DHA and dementia risk. Now, if the red line moves to the left without touching the yellow line, there's a link with reduced dementia risk. As you can see, dietary and likely erythrocyte membrane integrated DHA track with reduced risk, but plasma DHA does not. Now, there's a simple explanation for that, like the fact that plasma DHA may be measured from a smaller number of studies, making it more difficult to detect an effect. Or plasma DHA may simply be a bad way to detect an effect relative to the other two, or plenty of other explanations. So the takeaway here is that the omega-3 fat docosexanoic acid, so DHA, is associated with reduced dementia risk. Now, there are two problems that I want to bring to your attention here because they matter in us moving forward to discuss dosing in some other context. First, since all the studies included in this analysis were associative studies, the researchers have to do a series of adjustments to control for other factors that may influence the results that we just saw, the protection against dementia. So if you've been following Physionic for a while, you already know that. But one major drawback of doing meta-analyses in associative studies is that all these studies use different adjustments. So meaning that like one study may adjust for body weight, uh, genetic factors, blood pressure, and another might adjust for genetic factors and blood pressure, but instead of body weight, they adjust for blood sugar levels. Now think about the uncertainty that introduces in the relationships that we're seeing here when that's the case across all these studies. So here are the common adjustments used. Two, the length of the studies varied with a few lasting less than a year, which makes it unsurprising that some of these studies would show no effect if dementia, a series of diseases that take time to develop, doesn't have the time to develop. This is a minor issue as most of the studies lasted many years, even decades. Now I'm pointing these things out simply and there's plenty more that I could point out because I want you to understand that analyzing studies isn't just reading the title in the abstract, there's a lot of critical thinking, some compromise and limitations that go into an analysis of a study. So when someone hops on social media and someone's pointing at a study title or even explaining the basic conclusions of the study, there's probably a thousand rivulets of context that they've just bulldozed over to reach the headline as quickly as possible. Still, does that mean that the title of this video is nonsense? No. 
And not because I want it to be true, but because the researchers did something else quite clever that addresses some of our concerns here. They actually did a separate analysis on about a thousand individuals for up to six years to identify exactly how many people developed Alzheimer's. So that's a specific type of dementia. Now, I'll still admit that a thousand people to detect a specific disease state is quite a small study in the way that it's designed, but it does solve some of the earlier issues. One, now we have raw data that we can apply our own adjustments to, and therefore we know exactly what we're controlling for. And two, the length of the study is defined and probably long enough to detect a relationship. And if I simplify the data for you here, we're looking at Alzheimer's disease risk in these 1,000 individuals over the six years or up to six years. The same rules apply. So the beneficial relationship is in the red lines moved to the left of the yellow line. Notice that general exposure to omega-3 fats reduced uh, Alzheimer's disease risk, but when we split the data by the length of consumption, there's a much more certain and potent relationship with long-term exposure. Now, if we marry these data with the previous showing improvements in total dementia, when omega-3, so DHA in that case, are actually integrated in our, into our cells, this actually makes a lot of sense. Essentially, the lesson here is that omega-3 consumption needs to be consistent. Allow me to quick note that they did not find this relationship with DHA alone. And that's actually unsurprising, considering that the size of the study and they could only assess blood markers for DHA in 800 participants, so an even smaller group. Again, compromises and limitations. The main point here is that omega-3s as a whole track with reduced Alzheimer's risk, but only when consumed regularly over the long term. So the next question is, of course, what is the long term? What does that mean? And how much is going to actually offer these benefits to you and me? Let's get into that next. But if you're interested in understanding the relationship omega-3s have based on genetic risk, so people carrying an Alzheimer's-linked gene APOE4, or if age plays a role, or even other types of omega-3s like EPA and ALA, and if they carry benefit against dementia, and my recommendations on tested sources of omega-3s, then be sure to check out the extended version of this video that you're watching. It's part of my Physionic Insider membership. If you're a reader, all the videos also come with articles. And if you want to deliver to your email every week, along with a one paragraph summary of the most important points. All of that is included with an insider membership. Plus, what's this? More? Yeah, a lot more perks of being an insider. Check it out, the link is to join is in the description box and you get access to everything. Okay, we're talking about 10 years or longer. So, people who consume DHA for a decade or longer have a 64% reduced Alzheimer's disease risk based on this analysis. As for the amount, check this out. We're looking at DHA consumed on the horizontal axis. The vertical axis is dementia risk. If the lines go down, that's an indication of reduced dementia risk. So I don't need to spell it out more than that. You can see it's pretty clear, linear reduction, in risk with more DHA consumption, all the way down to one gram of DHA. The point here is consuming up to one gram of DHA per day for 10 plus years relates to reduced dementia risk. Now, does that necessarily mean supplementation? It does not. While some studies specifically looked at supplementation, many group supplementation with consuming food sources of omega-3s like fatty fish. So where does that leave us? What's the take home messages here? I will add here that there are weaknesses to this study, some that we went over, some that we haven't, which are inherent to this type of analysis. However, pairing the strengths of this study, plus my past analyses looking at intervention studies, so meaning uh, studies that feed omega-3s to people and then measure their cognitive performance, I think that we have strong evidence that omega-3s, especially DHA, improve cognitive function, protect against dementia, and should be consumed up to one gram per day, possibly more, we don't know, over the long term, meaning 10 years or more. Now, if you're anything like me, you'd also be interested in exactly what happens to your brain when these omega-3s interact with your brain cells. You can find that right here. It's a fascinating world trying to understand how these fats become part of your brain structure. I'll speak with you over there. I hope this helped and I'll catch you in the next one.
Bye.